Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of B Movie Theater. And boy, do I have a doozy for you guys. And I will not be alone in this so-called review. I am all, I am joined by I am joined by the man that I've always mentioned in my videos, and you'll and you probably heard his voice in the last video, Random Moments on Boredom Part Four, or Part Three, whatever the hell. Whichever one it was, but I am joined, of course, by, you know, my best friend Seth, which I'm sure a lot of you who have actually watched a lot of my previous videos goes by the Xbox Box Live name, or Xbox Live Gamer Tag Nico Kid. What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> now, since, you know, Halloween is upon us, Seth, you know, you, much like me and everybody else, doing a whole marathon this whole entire month of horror movies and yep. the one that and the one that you and I watched last night was probably one of the cheesiest and stupidest B movies and yet it was one of the awesome ones it wasn't like monster or thanks killing it was definitely bad but it was it was pretty good of course the movie we're talking about as you guys can see by the picture here is bass is basket case this movie was actually made. This movie was released in 1982 and was written and directed by Frank Hen Lauder. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this dude's last name, but this movie also spawned two other sequels that hopefully will become instant streamed on Netflix at a later date. Um, and. And pretty much, the movie is most noted and has gained a call following for its low-budget and over-the-top violence. <laughs> Some and man, ass violence. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. And basically, the story of Basket Case, for those of you that are looking at a lot of the pictures and pictures throughout this and are just going, what the hell? Okay, basically, Basket Case follow, follows Dwayne Bradley, a young man who carries around this wicker basket, and inside this wicker basket is the deformed, tumor-esque, like, Fetus I guess you could call thing. it... Yeah, it, like, it's like, like, a, it's like a living brother on his stomach, and it's it looks like a turd, a about, living turd with about, arms. <laughs> basically, he carries his brother, whose name, whose name is Beagle, who is basically, apparently they were born Siamese twins, However, Dwayne fully developed, whereas B, whereas Belial or Beguile, he actually was like this tumor Shit with like, man. With, yeah, he was like this giant lumpy tumor that like hung onto his side, and apparently, and apparently their mother dies during childbirth, and uh, their father and that, hates them for the fact yeah. that they're so hideously deformed. Well, he, hate, he, he, hate, he hated the brother. He hated the brother simply because he was the he blamed him as the reason that his wife died, and so he tries every surgeon who tells him, "Okay, we can't get rid of these conjoined twins." So he ends up basically secretly under the table, paying three doctors. Actually, wait, wasn't two of them a veterinarian, or one of them was a veterinarian? Well, one of them became a veterinarian, a veterinarian like after the fact, but basically. He these three doctors are secretly paid under the table to do surgery on Dwayne. They supposedly kill B Belial, and basically, apparently, one thing that they don't elaborate on that probably if if you and I ever see the sequel, Seth, will kind of explain into it. But they don't really go into very much fact. But apparently, Dwayne and Belial have a telepathic psychic connection yeah. that they can. However, we never we never hear Beagle speak. We only know that he's talking well, to Well, you, you he's hear like, him go a lot, but you never actually hear him speak. Yeah, he never speaks. He never forms vows. He just makes like guttural roars and all kinds of stuff. But apparently, he telepathically can speak to Dwayne, and pretty much, and pretty much after the fact, all three doctors change their identities. They try to get rid of all the evidence and stuff, and so Dwayne. Pretty much finds his brother. Their father is murdered. They're raised by their aunt until she dies, and then pretty much Dwayne goes to track down all three of these doctors, and and they, he and Belial basically get revenge. Yeah, tell him how they murdered their father. That was ridiculous. That was like so oh nice. man, oh. yeah, the way they murdered their dad was a doozy. Apparently, 
there's all this chainsawing, hammering, welding, buzz sawing, all it, this other shit going on. You would think that the thing that they created was made by Jigsaw himself. It's like a giant <laughs> saw blade. With the whole, it's like the a giant saw blade, of, nails, uh, screwdrivers, nails, and it's all machetes. Like a little hitch on a little tiny kitty wagon. And then you hear the father go, ah, and then you just show a, a shot of his stomach, and the next thing you know, you just see a whole bunch of like, blood splatter on the floor, and then you see both his feet just fall in the opposite direction. <laughs> oh, Basically, man. they split their dad in half. Who keeps a buzzsaw that big in their house? I didn't even huge. know they made buzz saws actually that big. It is but, ridiculous. But pretty much what happened after, but pretty much as as I was saying, they tried to track down all three of the doctors that are responsible. And man, one of what was it like the first doctor? I think like the opening scene they show the first doctor getting murdered, and it was actually the one that was the really reluctant one. That, <laughs> that, 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 He's like he, he's frantically leaving his house with like notes or something. Just, just he, how he dies is funny. He's like all the power gets cut off and he's in a corner trying to call the police. And next and you know he all smacks his doors. All and oh no, wait, no. The, the best part was the revolver. Oh my god, this thing was tiny. He just starts firing randomly in the shadows, but like he like hits he the fires wall. this little tiny kitty pea shooter and he just starts randomly like shooting it around like the nostalgia critic and that one like. I don't even remember, but you know, of course, what I'm, ta- what I'm talking about. And those of you that watch the Nostalgia Craig know what I'm talking about. He's just waving the gun around, like, shooting at stuff. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you see this giant hand just go in his mouth and, like, start grabbing him and scratching him. Just, or, like, it, oh, my God. It's so horrible. But just the oh, way oh, he did it just makes oh, it look oh, no. and, the, and, and then And then they actually show – and then apparently – Dwayne apparently is a likable guy because too every likeable. girl, yeah, he's way too likable because every girl in this film apparently wants to shag him. I mean, god damn, just like right off the bat, hey, can I sleep with you? No, you can't sleep with me. Just, oh my god. And then, and then that one lady, I don't know if her name was Sam or whatever, but that one like black girl that apparently she looked cool. like tranny. Dude, it looks like she got a plastic bag stuck over her head and beat with an ugly stick. I mean, just, th- there were moments in this that just had me and Seth laughing. And then, like, apparently Casey, who was apparently the love interest of the movie, supposedly, sitting there hitting on him in the lobby. And then apparently they show, and then, and then apparently they, they show the, they show the second Doctor. And apparently when he gets killed, we first see, we see b for the first time. And man, it's hilarious because he looks like a damn medic and then he's like, ah! And then he just has, like, razor-sharp teeth and, like, black eyes and stuff. And he's like – and he leaps on the guy. And he's just like – and the guy looks like he's just holding him the whole entire time. Just hold, just fighting with a puppet that's just not even there. And then, apparently, and then apparently the guy just gets messed up. Then he just, like, apparently rips the guy in half. But before that – had probably the most ridiculous over the top scene that even that even Seth that even Seth had to point out how impossible it was. He ripped off an entire full metal door, hinges and all. <laughs> Just how do you do that? He's barely he, he's the size about of a basketball with hands and he rips off a metal door. Apparently he thinks he's Spider Man because when you finally see him, he's still on the side of a wall. You don't even know how he's sitting there, just on the side of a wall. <laughs> Grabs the doctor. How is that possible? How? And then when he crawled down the building, that's what I also want to know. <laughs> and then oh. apparently, and then, oh no, but but see, and and then of course apparently he's like. What what was it like? The hamburger scene was funny as oh well. Oh my god! He he just dumps a whole bunch of hamburgers in there, and he like he just sits there. He's like throwing a fit like a baby. You just hear like nothing but loud munching and stuff. Then all of a sudden you see two pieces of bun just fly out of the basket. Yeah, his brother sits there. He goes across the street just to get some hamburgers. He comes back with two bags of about. I'm going to assume both bags are filled with about fifty of them. He himself eats ones, but he pours all of the hamburgers into the basket. And apparently, even that, the wrapping at all. Yeah, and that thing is still hungry. It is still hungry after well, all those well, hamburgers. 
But apparently, one thing, really one thing, thing that. One thing that you pointed out, Seth, and especially in the scene when they were showing how they got separated, was uh, was just you complaining when they were surgically removing Belial how it sounded like Velcro. No, that was straight up Velcro. Just... Like the sound effect of him just be like slurping and like being ripped off is just like Velcro. Yeah, to ma- just to try to make the sound of flesh ripping, they just took Velcro and kept spreading it apart. That was it. Uh, Horrible. But uh, but then apparently, what was it? What was another? What was another part that had me laugh? Oh no, wait. No, then that one doctor gets ripped in half. Then apparently they they go to the third doctor who's apparently become a, a veterinarian, and that had the part that un, that both annoyed you, Seth, but had you laughing at the same time just because of how dramatically over the top it was. <laughs> Oh my God! Tell them how they tell them how they killed the, the veterinarian. Oh my God! This bit, this is the only bitch. Uh, this bitch, this cold-hearted bitch, was the only one who understood that it was a revenge tale. And then she's like, and then she's sitting there. She goes, "You doubt, you got two seconds to get the fuck out of my office." And then, like everybody else in the film, she has to ask the stupid question, "What's in the wicker basket?" And 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 I thought, oh shit! She opens up the wicker basket. Bilal jumps out on her face, starts. Bite it. He literally he starts biting and eating her hair. Bites her on the side of the neck. Then she goes to grab a scalpel. He's apparently still like ooga boogaing her hair or whatever the fuck he was doing. Then uh, then apparently he dumps her face right in the scalpels. But the only thing though is the scalpels are all laying down, and she slowly puts her head in. And then she raises it up, and there's scalpels sticking all in her face. Oh, oh, She's oh no, all wait, screaming. no, well, no, they, that. <sighs> Well, well, like, no, they don't even show it. All you hear is just, like, her screaming. And then finally when the nurses break down the door, she just stands there. Like, her death curl is just her going, ah, with, like, five or six, like, scalpels sticking all in her face. Just how do you get the scalpels? They're all laying down. How does that get into your face? Did you stick them into your face? Are you that stupid? Oh, oh no, oh no! But I think the best part is that when they show him actually, when he's actually kissing Casey right around like the, the the Statue of Liberty, just just Belial apparently just fucking flips out and tears apart the apartment, completely demolishing it. And I don't know what just... the fuck he was trying to prove with the bed, because there's a part where he just lifts the bed up and down, almost like he's trying to get it on. <laughs> Like, 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 I'm like, well, what the hell is he doing? He, like, he trashes the TV, he throws everything else, and then all of a sudden you just see him, he's just grabbing the grabbing the end of a bedpost, and he's just banging it up and down on the floor. I'm like, what the fuck is up with that? Why was he so mad? Like, he was he was mad because his brother was basically getting poo nanny, and because he's a lumpy little tumor, he can't get any. Eh, there's no need to get that mad. I mean, my God. Throwing papers uh, oh, oh, at the no. wall. Oh, no. they're throwing drawers everywhere. Oh, no. Oh, no. It, called for. Oh, no. And then, of course, he tries to rape the black lady, and then he, like, fucks up. That was skull. funny. That and then, was appa- funny. And, then, and, then, and then, apparently, we get one weenie shot and then one boob shot right afterwards. And then no, apparently no. We he... got too many weenie shots. I'm sorry. It's and then, apparently... Because you just and, saw, like, the, the brother, the... The one that's not hideous lump of coal, just wa- running down the street naked for some reason. And there it is, his willy wagger just flapping in the wind like no tomorrow. And they do about five shots of this, just for no reason. You just see him running across the street, and then finally he gets to a girl's house and pulls off the sheet, and you get like about two seconds of boob. Not, not cool. Just completely uncool. And uh, oh no, but then apparently, and, 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 and then apparently you have the scene where apparently he kills her by raping her, and then all you see is like a whole bunch of blood coming from <laughs> coming from like that, her. But that was too funny because he, the little uh, what is the Bilal? He didn't even. Yeah. He doesn't even have anything to rape her with. But yet you just see him on top of her, moving up and down, just like no tomorrow. He's a, she's already oh. dead. Yeah, she's already dead. Although, although the one plot device that they have in there that I never really understood, and even you couldn't understand it, is that apparently his eyes can glow red. 
and they never explain that. And for like no reason, they never explain why his eyes glow, what is the purpose of his eyes glowing. It's just there. He just lights up like a jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> But they, but they they did end it pretty well though. I'm I'm not. Oh gonna, man, that I, that, 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 that was tell a pretty him, well ending. Oh no, t- tell him about the ending when he puts it, when he puts Bilal back in the basket and he just starts, and it basically, I but, guess what was basically yeah. uh, what is it? Dwayne he was pissed that the little turd sat there and raped his girlfriend to death when he hasn't even done anything with her, and um. So he's saying there he stubs him in the basket, starts swelling the basket around, just smacking it, just like yelling at it. Next, you know, he walks up to the basket. Bilal's hand comes on, grabs him right in the, you know, and just starts lifting him up in the air for like about, 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 thirty about, seconds. That 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 to me was just the part that you and I were just like, oh, because like he starts yelling at his brother, threatening to kill him. Everybody's making a scene. Everybody sees him pop out. He gets pissed, and then he just grabs his own brother by the junk and just lifts him up off the ground. Then they struggle outside the hotel where Bilal's holding on, but he's also holding on to Dwayne's throat, apparently noosing him to death. And then apparently they fall to their death at the end of this movie. And but the way they landed, they landed like they were when they used to be conjoined. So I mean, and, it was kind of like and, a. And that was the part. And that was the part that was a very symbolic irony to end the film. Like I didn't notice it until you said it at the last minute. Yeah, that was it was pretty well. Was yeah, pretty well was, ending. Yeah, that 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 was actually pretty interesting. Um. And pretty much, basically. The special effects for this movie, though, guys, when they show Bilal, a lot of it consists of an animatronic puppet or just like a regular hand puppet. And yeah, it's, it's not animatronic. It's just a regular puppet. But, I mean, they did it pretty well. It's not and the and, 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 and there are some scenes where you can easily tell, but there's like a little bit of stop motion in some scenes. Yeah, it's refreshing however, to me. However... However, when they actually show the singular POV shots of his hand, that is actually really a glove being worn by the director himself. Which, there's a little interesting tidbit, and apparently... Uh, and, and apparently his whole entire... That whole entire rampage sequence was nothing but stop motion. Um, Except and, for a few parts here and there where he did went first-person view. And... and um, where it was just throwing things around. But yeah, yeah, it was definitely it was pretty good. Yeah, it was it was definitely not bad and definitely I'm and definitely I'm looking forward to wanting to to wanting to see the sequel because actually both sequels cuz apparently the second one they go into a nursing home just to set that up for you guys. Apparently they go into a nursing home or something like that, that I have a whole bunch of deformed or, like, really freakish people. Like, I saw one scene, to give you guys a nice little visual, is this lady called Susan, who apparently, whenever she gets excited or, like, aroused, apparently she apparently a mutated crocodile-like embryo bursts out of her stomach, and she has to keep pushing it back out <laughs> of her stomach. <laughs> but the third movie... The third movie had some juicy bits. Like, they had one bit where he, like, busts out of the box. He grabs a cop by his throat. You hear a black guy just go, what the fuck? <laughs> and, then appa- and then apparently they show a scene where, like, his lift. There's no blood or anything. It's just completely, like, clayish looking, like Play-Doh. His upper and lower and lower bottom jaws just protrude out of his mouth. And you see, like, torn bits of flesh and stuff, like Play-Doh or Silly Putty. His eyes are bulged out, bulged out completely. Like even the optic nerve is like stretched beyond human capacity. So he looks like a very goofy Looney Tunes type type deal. And you just hear this one cop, and that and that was the be- best part about this movie that made you and I laugh is just how bad the dialogue was in some sequences. Oh my god, that was some horrible dialogue. It sounds well, that, like they well, just got the people off one, the street it, it, to do this. Anybody. Anybody that watches the third one, there's a part during that choke sequence where there's a co- or there's a cop that goes, "Oh Jesus God!" I'm like, "What the hell?" And then apparently there's another part where then there's apparently another part where Bilal 
apparently meets a girl that's exactly like him. They have sex in the third movie. Oh, and apparently they she gives birth. This is like the original Octo Mom before the Octo Mom, basically. This lady that is exactly like Belial, she actually gives birth to 12 children, all of them interconnected like fucking string be string yeah. Like a sausage string link? Beans. Basically, yeah, it's like a sausage link of, like, baby umbilical cord, baby umbilical cord, baby umbilical cord. <laughs> Just like, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, man, it, th th that's the great part about, about movies like Basket Case Set. They make no sense, and they're just, they're over the top just for entertainment value. It might not make sense, but it is still fun to watch. Indeed. But there you go, guys. That is at least the first basket case. That's movie. basket case in a basket for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, it had but, to be made. It had to be made. You know, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I think the best part to me is that, I, speaking of baskets, I almost thought that Belial was going to be stuck in that packing peanut box when it, when when Dwayne gave him a TV. Because apparently there's a scene where when he goes to try to meet up with Casey, he gives him a newspaper like he's going to read a newspaper. And then he also gives him a TV, which apparently he goes to turn the knob and he pulls the knob off <laughs> on accident. It's just like, why would he watch TV? Didn't even know those things. Didn't even know he could watch anything just thought he loved to kill but nope loves to read newspapers and watch tv apparently uh and apparently just eat absolutely everything eats nothing but meat and a whole lot of it he's oh, a man. cannibal but yeah guys that is but yes guys that is the first basket case movie hopefully if if netflix can have the second and third ones you know seth and i'll watch those and then definitely do the other two. But there you go, guys. Uh, an, I wouldn't call this really a horror movie. I, I wouldn't really call this a horror movie. Uh, it, well, it had horror movie moments, so I, I would it, I would classify it as it, it's debatable it's... In, in in some circles. You know, Seth classifies it as horror. Technically, I consider it more like a dark comedy. Well, well, it wasn't necessarily supposed to be a comedy. It's just it got betrayed that way. But, um... It's kind of like Evil Dead. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it, it, it's like an alternate version to Evil Dead. Yeah, basically. But, there you go, guys. That is... That is... That is it for this... This it's... episode of... I, I, I keep saying this episode of B-Movie Theater and then keep adding on facts, but... This yeah, week's B-Movie Theater. Come tune in next time. Same bad time. Same bat channel. Oh wow. <laughs> Just wow. Uh. Yeah, later everyone. <laughs> <laughs>